Tonight's episode is dedicated and in partnership. Thank you to Rappler for this source of news. But we want to address a more important situation. A child molester, a sex trafficker, money launderer, and he's also the son of God. His name is Apollo Kiblo. A Rappler investigation uncovers three properties, estimated to be worth P338 million Trisedo Pastor Paulo Quibaloy and his group. Two of these are in Canada, while one is located in an affluent part of California near the homes of celebrities. Embattled doomsday preacher Apollo Quibaloy and his controversial Kingdom of Jesus, Christ KOJC Network are linked to multi-million peso homes in North America a glimpse off the rich lifestyle that he and his close associates have enjoyed through the years. The details are based on official documents obtained by Rappler on Monday, March 11th, as well as information from sources privy to KOJC operations. The discoveries came after former President Rodrigo Duterte was appointed caretaker of the properties belonging to the Quibble Leg Group. Besides the North American properties, there are also several land holdings in the Philippines, as well as an air fleet. Quibaloy, as described by his mentor, Reverend Gordon Mallory of the United Pentecostal Church, went from a pauper, a beggar, to a multi-billionaire with a lifestyle of the rich and famous. Money means nothing to him, Mallory said. Quibaloy has been in the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigations, most wanted list since early 2022 for sex trafficking of children and promotional money laundering, among others. FB Poster says the preacher is also wanted for forcing members to to solicit donations for a bogus charity. Donations that actually were used to finance church operations and the lavish lifestyle of its leaders. They are putting in the in the media about Apollo Kibaloy, but I tell you the truth here. Apollo Kibaloy is the son of God. And because he's the son of God, he cannot be held for sex offender and sex crimes because he's the son of God. He created the sex crime. I mean, the sex. Just, I mean, oh. A Senate committee has cited him in contempt and has sought his arrest so he could testify. Before the panel, which is looking into similar allegations of abuse and exploitation hurled by his former followers, in a video posted on the Pentecostals of Cebu City Facebook page. On January 30th, Mallory say Quibaloy owns mansions and estates all over the world, confirming the one in California. Mallory recalled being invited and brought to the California mansion with his wife and St. Quibolo's vehicles in the garage, which included a brand new Bentley and a Mercedes. Hesed the Filipino preacher also gave him a box that contained cash more than what his family needed to last six months. Justin Bieber has a house across the street. The Kardashians have a house down the street while Smith lives around the corner, said Mallory who recalled the time he was invited to Quibbleau's mansion, the mansion stands on Simpson Place, a quiet residential neighborhood located in Galabasas, California. Known for its upscale homes, lush landscaping, and privacy afforded its residents. The area offers easy access to amenities and outdoor activities. Let me, let me tell you what's going on. Let me tell you what's going on with my eye. I am a big time worshiper of uh, Apollo Quibbleau. I worship him. I wake up in the daytime and you know I pray, oh Apollo take my pain away even though my leg still hurts and then you know my, my back still hurts. I, you know I have many imperfections but Apollo Kibaloy told me that you just keep praying, keep praying and I and I and I believe I believe that I will be healed to the hands of uh the and uh the Lord and Savior of uh, the, that's uh, in the Philippines name uh, Apollo Kibaloy. But let me talk about right now what's going on at because you know this is very sick i don't like it when they talk about my 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 you know he's like he's not like he's not just like my pastor this is my idol i want to be just like him i was hoping one day maybe i could be the son of a cable or you know, maybe he could adopt me and then i could i could go to the inside the house and then i could uh have fun with the ladies you know? Uh, you know, I don't know anything like that. I don't. I always see. I always see him as someone who is very respectful. It's very well mannered. Be behind the cameras and stuff, you know. Oh yeah, he's a silly guy. Joke. If there's anyone that's a joke, it's that guy. You know. 
I've seen jokes in my life, and he looks like one of them. Hey man, you gotta give him the benefit of the doubt, you know, is there's no evidence. There is no evidence of the crime, then we cannot say that he's the, the criminal in, in the crime, you know. If there's no evidence of the crime, then we cannot say that he is the motherfucker. You know? But I will show you anyway. I will prove to you that he is, he is innocent beyond a reasonable doubt, okay? 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 Network are linked to multi-million peso homes in North America. Oh, that's a that's a, So what? Oh, that is not my problem. They're linked to me. That is, that is a god, diba? Yeah. Completely understandable. I don't, I don't think that's bad. Just because they have two big houses, it's not the crime. It's not the crime. God gave. If I am God's son, why, why? What do you think? Not going to give me a mansion here in, in my, in this uh, this planet. Of course, I'm God's son. I'm gonna have a big mansion. You know, I'm God's son. It's this is, this is uh, you know, this is going away away from the topic. We need to cross-examine each other first. You cannot judge me. I am. I will judge you in times, diba? Okay. If if my if I am the God, if I am the Father God, and my son is here on Earth, I am. I he needs to have a jet plane. I don't care what you guys say. You have to think. Because you guys think like human beings. That's why. That's the problem. Human. You guys are not God. If you're a God like me, you will think like a God. That's why, you know, you guys have very small mind small minded people. You know, you you look at me because I have a I have a big jet, I have a, you know, these crazy influentials like the Rodrigo Duterte and then uh, uh I have these uh this air fleet, you know, and as well as uh many I am God's son. Do I have to keep telling you I am God's son? Of course I'm gonna have houses everywhere I go. Where where will I put my head? On the pillow? Of course, it has to be a, a nice pillow. I come from heaven. You think my standards are very low? No, my standards are very high. Come on now. Get Welcome back, everybody. Sorry about that. Uh, I had to uh, take a um, you know, my my camera is not working because the son of God might must be interfering with my uh my my you know, my important broad stream here. You know? So. Nineteen sixty nine we arrived in the Philippines. One of the first young men we met was nineteen years old. We took him out of a hut. He and his family used to beg for food. And so he came to Manila, we put him in our Bible school, our very first Bible school, he excelled. And after Bible school, he came to our house, he lived with us for eight years. If I'm Paul, he's Timothy. He I took him everywhere. Amen. He was an incredible guy. Developed into the most wonderful preacher. Became our national youth president. I took him on his first overseas trip. I gave him an allowance every week to sustain him. His teeth was rotten in his head, so I took him to the dentist, and they gave him all new teeth. I mean, now you get the picture. Amen. But he, somewhere along the line, he got tripped up, and he went and became his own deal, left our organization formed his own, became something he really isn't, but he started to lift himself up. And people almost worship him. And uh, over a period of years, 30-some years, he went from a pauper, a beggar, to a multi-billionaire. He has 7 million followers that all pay tithes and offerings to him. He's taken a lot of that money and he's placed it in different kinds of businesses and foundations until he is like a kingmaker in the Philippines. He's a mover and a shaker. He owns vast portions of land. I can't just tell you, airplanes and helicopters and you, you just name it. One of the wealthiest people around. A poll just came out that he is the wealthiest, number one wealthiest religious leader on the planet. I took him out of a hut. He's now poised to be the next president of the Philippines. There's this team working on the path to the presidency. He's the reason the present president, president is the president. I took him out of a hut. He turned his back on this apostolic truth. And the very day that I walked out of the doctor's office, 
in Salem, Oregon, and he told me to have to take six months off at least, have to have these treatments. This was the day that this young man made a concerted effort to find me because come to find out that for seven years preceding, he could not sleep at night because my face would come up toward before him, and he was tormented. I've got to go back and see my mentor. I've got to go back to my roots. I've got to go back. I've got to, I, I, I've got to see him. I've got to see mom and all this. I kind of resisted him before that because he'd made some effort before, but no big deal. I just wasn't going to do it, but this was the day I walked out of that office, and then I had people tell me, you need to see him. Long story short, he flies into Salem, Oregon, and his smallest executive jet, the smallest executive jet, $29 million plane, comes off the plane. I meet him. I hadn't seen him in over 30 years. We embraced. He said, sir, I have come in the will of God. He asked where mom was. I said, well, she's at the house fixing dinner. He had an entourage there. Some people had come into Portland and got him a limousine and all that. And but you got to understand, I mean, he's the lifestyle of rich and famous with this guy. He comes to our little humble, little double wide. I took him out of a hut. Now he's coming to my hut. Everything had come full circle. Wow. The scripture here says, you bring your tithes into the storehouse. You trust God with your offerings. You be faithful to him. Hallelujah. And he said, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven, and I'm going to pour out, pour it out, a blessing. That there's not even room enough to receive it. He comes to our house. We have dinner. We pray. We laugh. We reminisce. He has gifts for us there. I haven't told this to a lot of churches. Had a little box there with, I'm not going to tell you how much, but it was more than we needed to last for six months. He gave us other gifts. He said, I'm going back to the Philippines in a couple of weeks. He said, would you come visit me in Los Angeles? He has millions and estates all over the world. He has this one in Los Angeles. They say it's, he sent several days later. He sent his plane up, picked us up in his executive jet. He wasn't in it. Hey Amen. He's got two pilots. One used to be the pilot for Al Gore, the vice president. Hey Amen. He's got that. He's got kind of a deal. Get into the limousine in Los Angeles. Merle Ewing is playing. He loves Merle Ewing. That's his connection. He kept, never lost that connection. We finally go to his house. Amen. He ushers us into this mansion. Justin Bieber has a house across the street. The Kardashians have a house right down the street. Will Smith lives around the corner. That's the place that he has that mansion in. Ushers us into his house. We weren't there five minutes, he said. I want to, Mom, sir, I want to buy you a house like this house. I said, Paulo, I said, we don't need a house like this house. And I said, number two, we don't want a house like this. Well, he looked amazed. Everybody else got their hand out. <laughs> Amen. So we had a banquet. Then it was my wife's birthday. They sang happy birthday to her a hundred different ways and then gave her a card and had money in that. Took me out to the garage, brand new Bentley sitting in there. Beautiful Mercedes. I want to buy you a car. I said, oh, man, you like Lincoln? I said, yeah, I like Lincoln. He's not going to buy you Lincoln. He's going to have everything on it. Amen. I just, all of this was just so unbelievable. I think everybody here that would know us just a little bit know that we're not money grabby. Our God's never been money. It's always been souls. It's always been the kingdom of God. Amen. And so God just takes care of us. There I am 
sitting with Apollo. Took him out of a hut. Now he's a multi-billionaire. Money means nothing to him. <sighs> Amazing. Spent three weeks at Christmas time with him this last year. Can't tell you everything is going on, but something's going on. Right now he's building a he's building the largest inside domed stadium or arena in all of Asia in his in his city, Davao City in the Philippines. It's it's almost complete. He will dedicate it in April the 25th of this next year, which is his 70th birthday. He wants our whole family to be there, and he wants many of our friends to come there to be with him. He's already told us, he said, anytime you want to use this arena for your services and your crusades, have at it. He offers us his Jeff flies all over Mindanao in the helicopters and all that stuff that he's got. He gives him his security detail and all that, so he's done many, many wonderful things for us. But he has given, and he has given, and he has given. But I throw that picture up there. This is a little different service tonight. Amen. I want what I'd like to do. I would like to enlist all of you. If you could just make a commitment within, in the, with everything else that you've done or you're doing, make a commitment to at least one time a day pray for that man. One time a day. It can be a minute. It can be five minutes. It, you can take longer. But just if you would make a commitment every day to pray for that man until it happens, can you imagine what would happen if that man would ever truly come back to his roots? He's got seven million followers. He baptizes all of them in Jesus' name. He believes in one God. He can't stand the Trinity, so he got a whole lot of it right. Amen. We need to pray that the devil who's tried to devour that man's ministry, amen, we need to pray that God will turn him totally around and bring him back to those apostolic roots. Hallelujah. Are you going to pray with me for that man? Hallelujah. Let's everybody just raise our hands towards him right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all here together on a Wednesday night here in the state of Maryland. Lord Jesus, we have felt your presence here tonight. Your power and your glory has been amongst us. We've seen you do many wonderful things, but Lord, now you're bringing us into your confidence. And we are coming together as a body of people to believe that that devourer is not going to destroy the fruit of that man and that he's going to come all the way back in the name of Jesus Christ and he's going to give a black eye to the devil in his kingdom. In Jesus' name, devil, you can't have my son in the gospel. You can't have him. Hallelujah. I covered him for the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Kibaloi has been in the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation most wanted list since early 2022 for sex trafficking of children and promotional money laundering. Oh, that's money laundering. What are you doing? To, are you doing, you're gonna do that to my country? And of course, the the trafficking of children. Oh no! You know that one there? Oh no! Oh, I ay, suck it, young man. Alam mo yung punishment, John. They will put you in the jail, and then they will crucify you. Seriously. It happens. They will make it. They will. Uh, sometimes, you know, there's uh, people like this in the very big years. You know, sometimes you don't know where this, the security guards are. You know, they happen to Jeffrey Epstein. He, you know, all of a sudden, uh, he's, um, he's in his prison cell, and then all of a sudden, he's hanging. He's hanging. He died. He died. They say he suicide. But how is that? How is this possible? Where did he get the rope? He had no rope. He must have had help. Di ba? Yeah, one. Ganun talaga eh. The security guard, he say, Ay, Oy, Brad, tatay lang ako. Five minutes, okay? See, five minutes lang. Tulog. And then, you know, five minutes later, what happened? Patay na siya? Oh, okay. Sino? Yung sex, yung sex, 
Sex offender? Oh, okay lang yan. Okay lang yan. Sex offender yan. Okay. And uh, everybody, it's okay. Calm down. It's just a sex offender. He's dead. Everybody can just, you know, relax. Everybody, it's, you know, dear, uh, go back to sleep and, uh, you know, you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, we just have another uh, sex offender here. It's hang He's hanging by his neck and, uh, you know, we just want to say to everybody, you know how it is here. Nobody likes a sex offender here because that's just the way it is, you know. We cannot have this kind of person here. Uh, the staff has nothing to do with it, but um, uh, I believe this was a suicide, so, yeah. Then how it's gonna look like he below you. It's gonna look like you did the suicide.